So we've been promised AI agents that can handle complex real world tasks, but here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people are using these billion dollar AI systems to check the weather and set kitchen timers. The same task we were doing with Siri a decade ago. So meanwhile, Amazon's AGI research uh, chief, David Lund, just admitted that the progress of AI models has fundamentally slowed down to almost a crawl. Why are we building super intelligent chatbots when we can't even get them to reliably complete basic workflows? So what does this say about the massive gap between what AI can and it can't actually do versus what we've been promised? We're gonna dive into this and take a look at it today. All right, so AI can definitely write some code and anybody who says otherwise hasn't tried some of the latest tools. And sometimes the, the code is brilliant and it would take hours to create manually. But the reality check is that nobody wants to discuss is that writing code and building software are totally different things. So let's break down why this distinction matters more than you think. Now, as always, leave a comment down below because honestly, it's my favorite thing and the best compliment you could give me. I read every single one and I comment on them. So make sure that you uh, leave a comment for me because it's the best compliment you can give me. Now, data recently reveals that 59% of pe people primarily use AI systems for weather checks and 51% use it for playing music and 47% for web searches. So these are the exact same use cases we had with basic voice assistance back in 2015. Not a lot of meaningful progress to the actual user behavior. Now, Google, Amazon, and Apple have spent billions of dollars upgrading their assistants and advanced AIs, yet people aren't trusting them with more complex tasks. So the problem isn't capability, it's reliability and trust which are fundamental requirements for real world software systems. So while AI demos show incredibly potential, users instinctively stick to simple low risk interactions, which uh, where mistakes don't really matter. Now this pattern reveals the massive gap between impressive demonstrations and practical daily usage. Now I wanna dive into a couple of different articles here and, and show you some of these here. So this one is one that I was reading about, it says best practice for building agentic AI systems what actually works in production. So even as the title is already in, insinuating here, not everything is going to work exactly like the demo expects, right? So right off the bat, it's like real agent systems where multiple specialized agents communicate, delegate tasks, and somehow don't crash into each other. So this is one of the things is that they're teaching, and it's a really long technical document. And one of the very first thing that it talks about is the ability to break down into primary agents. These handle the conversation. They understand context, break down tasks, and talk to users. Think the, of them as the project manager who never writes the code. Then a sub-agent will do just one thing. They get a task, they complete it, return results. No memory, no context, pure function execution. So that's the very first thing that I'm gonna tell you. So here at Startup Hack, as we're building uh, software systems for people, this is definitely a pattern that we follow. Now I've actually found very few systems that we can write with just one uh, AI system. We usually have to chain many of them together. In some cases, we have something that's doing like 12 different steps between AI and machine learning in order to get something to work. See, because this is one of the things is that AI agents do really well at when you get them specialized to do one thing. That's one of the things that I would definitely tell you to really make sure that you're understanding as you take away from this article today. Now, at the end here, after it's done all this work to explain all this, it says, remember, agents are tools, not magic. This is what I've been teaching here on this channel for a long time. They're good at really, they're really good at specific tasks, but terrible at figuring out what those tasks should be, which is your job. And that's what I've tried to teach here for a long time, right? Is humans plus AI work well together. If you're thinking that humans, or AI is just going to replace humans, you're missing the point of AI altogether. So, hum, so AI should augment human, right? The example that Andre Carpathy gives us is he teaches that it's Iron Man, right? Tony Stark needs the Iron Man suit. It's not just the robots going out and doing it itself, right? Now, Amazon's AGI lab, David Loon, recently admitted that progress on AI models have fundamentally, fundamentally slowed compared to the exponential growth that we saw earlier. He estimates that fewer than 1,000 people worldwide can be considered elite AI talent and only 150 he'd trust with massive computational resource. So this is a little bit of the article that he was talking about today. And this is actually the interviewer was kind of poking at this a bit. He says, well, there's a lot to that. I would suggest that maybe a lot of people in the industry don't necessarily believe we live in one reality. When I was at last at Google IO developer conference, Sir, uh, co-founder Sergey Brin and Google DeepMind uh, were on stage and they both seem to believe that we were existing in multiple realities. And what he's talking about here is they're sitting there on stage selling this hype and it seems like they really believe it. 
And yet the rest of us are living here in reality going, that's not exactly how well these systems work. So he goes on to say, so I don't know if there's a thing that you've encountered in your social circles uh, or work circles over the years, but not everyone in AI necessarily believes that, right? And then um, uh, Luan definitely laughs here and is like, well, I think that's kind of the hot take and it's above my pay grade. So he's definitely being careful on what he says here, right? But I wanted to go down to something else that he said here in the article, and then I'm going to pick through a couple of other things on it, because I think the big thing here is, uh, so he's talking about this S curve, and he's saying we're definitely in an S curve, 100%. No question, he says. But then every time one of those S curves seems to slow down a little bit, there's another one coming up behind it. And I think agents are the next S curve. And the specific training recipe we're talking about earlier is one main way of getting this next uh, giant amount of acceleration. So he's saying that with that S curve, as things start to slow down and we go back into the next phase, he'd say there's another one right behind it. And that's the reason why it felt like exponential growth. Now, these tools and everything and everything we've seen have definitely slowed down. So we saw GPT-5 be released. This was supposed to be, you know, OpenAI's big, you know, AG, proof that AGI existed. And yet Sam Altman's even admitted AGI is not a really helpful term, right? Because they don't really have anything to follow behind it on the next part of the S-curve. Now, there's a lot of people playing with AI in the browser, but it's inherently dangerous because it can do a ton of bad stuff. So this is why we, we're seeing here that there's less than a thousand people worldwide that can be considered elite AI talent. This is why we see all these big companies fighting over the AI talent. Now, Luan agrees that AGI is, as uh, quote, a model that can help a human do anything they want to do on a computer. That's his definition of AGI. But we're nowhere near that. The talent shortage isn't just about hiring, it's about the complexity of building systems that work reliably in production environments. Even Amazon, with virtually unlimited resources, both human and computer, is struggling to create AI agents that can handle real-world business workflow consistently. The scarcity of expertise explains why so many AI implementations fail when they move from controlled demos to messy real world scenarios. This is the MIT research paper that we've seen recently where it says 95% of these fail. Again, it's not the weakness of the machines. It's the hype of the expectation that everybody thought what they were going to do. Now, LLMs excel at generating isolated chunks of code or data based on specific prompts and requirements you provide them. Software engineering requires maintaining mental models of how different components interact, how they evolve and affect each other over time. Now, um, according to Zed's engineering team, LLMs get, quote, endlessly confused, end quote, when tests fail. They can't decide whether to fix code or to fix the test. Fix the test. Real engineers test their work iteratively, building understanding of the system's behavior and making informed decisions about changes. When LLMs hit frustration points, they often delete everything and start over. And that's the exact opposite of how experienced developers debug problems. This is a fundamental inability to maintain context and state and is why AI generated code often works in isolation, but breaks when you put it together into complex systems. And this is part of the reason why we see AI can produce a new prototype fairly quickly, but you give it a large old existing code set and it will usually fail miserably. So building reliable AI agents requires sophisticated two-tier architectures with primary agents handling content, context and specialized sub-agents doing focused work. Uh, a lot of different de dev teams will spend weeks trying to reverse engineering successful agent systems only to discover most complex hierarchies completely fall apart in production. The stateless by default principle is critical. Any shared memory or state between agents introduces unpredictable bugs and failures. Let me explain that a little differently. So if something goes wrong in step one, as we talked about, most AI agents take things to be chained together. If something goes wrong in step one, and because LLMs are non-deterministic systems, you can't rely that it's always going to produce that result. So then step five is definitely going to be even a more catastrophic failure. Now, most companies attempting AI agent implementations lack the infrastructure, talent, and organizational process needed for successful deployment. Even simple agent tasks like analyzing customer feedback require careful orchestration, token management, and error handling most teams would underestimate in most cases. Now, the engineering challenge of deploying agents at scale are being dramatically underestimated by executives who only see the polished demo. 
Now, Google Assistants like Alexa and Air, uh, Siri have actually gotten worse as companies try to upgrade them with generative AI capabilities. The transition from rigid natural language process to flexible large language models broke many basic functionalities that used to work. We've had a Google Home sit in our uh, on our table, uh, our architecture cabinet for, I don't know, a long time, probably half a decade at least. And it's funny because recently, as Google has shifted more to the um, AI model to give answers, it now just fails over and it's really become almost a useless paperweight to the point where we're about ready to turn it off. And 90% of what we do is ask the weather. Um, every time we ask the questions, it says, I don't know, but let me check the web. And it usually then gives some obscure reference. So these agents have actually gotten worse as LLMs have gotten better, right? And so you would think it would have made them better, but really it's actually just done more to confuse these AI systems that we have. So users like me report that assistants now frequently misunderstand simple requests like weather queries or smart home controls. So companies are struggling to balance the expanded capabilities of AI with the consistency and reliability users expect from assistant technology. This degradation explains why people stick to simple tasks. They've learned not to trust these systems with anything important. I was in a boardroom the other day and some executives were like, AI this, AI this, AI this. And another business person who's closer to the business had to remind them that, look, a 75, 80% isn't going to be good enough with the level of service we expect to give to our clients. And so this was one of those examples where we're seeing somebody who really knows and understands, you know, explain that the quality that's coming out of these AI systems are not good enough yet. Now, there, there's an, a mental model problem here. Right. Effective solution uh, software engineering requires maintaining a clear mental model of both requirements and implementation details throughout development cycles. LLMs cannot identify differences between what code should do versus what it actually does, leading to fundamental debugging failures. When experienced developers encounter failing tests, they analyze their mental model to determine whether the issue is in the code or the requirements. So AI systems assume that their generated code works correctly and becomes confused when reality doesn't match their assumptions about the system. So if you're coding and it inserts a library and that library doesn't exist because the LLM originally hallucinated it and put it into your code, and then it goes back to try to run a test against it and it fails, it gets horribly confused and gets stuck into a loop on, whereas I can take one look and go, that library doesn't exist. So this inability to maintain persistent understanding across iterations is why AI can write functions but cannot architect cohesive software solutions. So put simply, this is, <clears throat> we can definitely see that AI can definitely write code. However, it cannot build software, right? There's a massive chasm between impressive AI demos and actual production implementations that deliver consistent business value over time. This is the reason why I keep hearing everybody say that AI is gonna eat up SaaS. And I don't believe it because most of SaaS are very basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete, right? So they're very basic systems and combine systems together. That's what most SaaS products are. And that's why they're very successful because they do the right thing every single time. Now, David Lawn from AG, uh, from Ad Amazon says, and he mentioned a two digit billion dollar cluster for AGI research where users stick to basic weather queries and timer functions. So he's talking about that at AWS, they've been monitoring some of these very expensive systems. So a two digit billion dollar system. So he's talking about like a 10 billion plus dollar system that where most of the queries coming in are either a timer function or weather requests. So this just kind of goes to show how, you know, we've had these powerful things running around in our pockets that have 16 cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, this is like, something like a thousand times more processing power than the shuttle that took uh, the astronauts to the moon. And yet most of us just uh, scroll and post cat videos, right? So now I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So make sure you drop a comment down below because that's the best compliment you can give me. Now, current AI systems prioritize impressive capabilities over the consistent reliability that software seems uh, systems actually require in production environments. Users have learned to avoid trusting AI with important tasks because unpredictable failures can carry higher costs than manual processes. Now, most successful AI implementations focus on a narrow domain specific problems rather than attempting general purpose intelligence across multiple areas. Let me explain this. Rather than being everything, they niche down into one specific use case. Companies are often abandoning broad AI assistance in favor of specialized tools to solve a specific high value problem. Now, if your company has systems that need help, 
reach out to us because our, our specialty here at Startup Pack is helping you connect your systems to work like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, AI systems struggle with maintaining sufficient context accurately, enough to iterate between working systems and complex multi-step processes. So successful AI implementations require careful human orchestration of context, which limits scalability and increases complexity rather than reducing it. So despite massive investments in AI capabilities, most companies struggle to identify measurable returns on their AI initiatives beyond basic automation uh, tasks. The gap between AI potential and actual business impacts reveals fundamental misalignment between technology capabilities and real organizational needs. So most people just needed a cleaner database rather than AI to come in and try to do something that it was totally overkill to do just so that the CEO could say they're doing AI. So users continue choosing simple, reliable tools over sophisticated AI systems for most daily tasks because consistency trumps impressive capabilities. Now, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great discussion, so make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure to like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. So if we can uh, help you out, check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.